Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 19. As promised, this episode will see relatively little in terms of new constructions, and we will mostly deal with road upgrades, a little bit of planning, but our main goal will be to start lowering the amount of debt we are dealing with right now. In fact, this episode will end at around the month of July, but I decided to keep the game running after that, so we can keep working on that debt. So in the next episode, we can expect a little bit of a time jump until the end of the year, but let's not get ahead of ourselves, I'll talk about that at the end. I mentioned earlier that I would like to work a bit more on this road if I can. It was a bit too bumpy, and we still need to make it work with the railroad, without adding a level crossing, which I would like to avoid using in high traffic areas. Let's start by making this strip of land a bit more level, but not completely flat. All these constructions are a bit annoying when it comes to bulldozer availability, so I might disable a couple projects temporarily. That should do it. Only need a little love from the smoothing tool, and we will have a relatively level path for our road to go on. Much better. Less of a roller coaster than it was before. Let's not forget that this is mostly meant for the benefit of the railroad, so let's trim it back a little. In fact, I will end up demolishing quite a bit of it in a second to make it work properly. After digging out a small dip to accommodate the road underpass, let's get to work. Yeah, this will do just fine for the road. Next, we need to raise the usual two hills for the rail overpass. Not quite high enough. A little bit more should do it. But now the excavators are away from the construction office. Let's prevent one from leaving so we can use it for a second. We have the necessary height difference. But the pillars forced us to use the other steel bridge, which is just fine by me. Sure. There was a point where the red bridge had a valid placement, but that had an angle compared to the main line that I wasn't happy with. Also, the bridge is going over the road at a weird point. 
If it was right above the lowest point in the dip, that would make more sense I think. My first attempt was to make the road conform to the rail bridge, but I quickly dropped that idea. Let's just replace the bridge. Much better. But once more, we are at a pretty bad angle to make the connection to the main line. I think this requires a little bit of remodeling. The resulting incline would have been pretty steep anyways, this way it will be much more gentle. Oh yeah, that's the ticket. Now we just need to connect the service branch up to the main line, and we are back in business. Might even be a bit nicer than it was before. I'm okay with building the rails a bit more, but let's not go overboard with it, the bridges can wait. Now it's all about the steel supply. That's the biggest hurdle our construction industry need to overcome. But I think this place looks much better than it did before. Let's help this guy out. By destroying the two roads, the pathfinding got a bit messed up. Next, we have two stations we need to connect up. The wood storage, and the coal loading station. Unfortunately, this time we cannot get away with building overpasses. Thankfully, only one of the level crossings will be on a used road, and even that will be relatively low traffic, so I deemed it an acceptable evil. There is an ever so slight turn in that track, but it's barely noticeable. I think each track can go to their respective stations, and we can just add a crossing before it goes over the road. There. This way, both stations are accessible by both incoming and outgoing lanes of the main line. Now it just need to be connected to the rest of the network, and it's ready to be built. Not too shabby, now we have four stations on this off branch. I kinda like this place, the rail tracks running parallel with the high voltage wires, 
surrounded by factory buildings, in the middle of a forest. Very industrial. This is where I decided to keep the game running after the episode was over. I keep taking out loans, when I should be repaying them by now. Anyways, to better manage the workforce, I lowered the number of workers in the two apartment constructions, so they will go to the bus station instead. Once all the materials are delivered, we can let them back in. Once this road is finished completely, we can upgrade the neighboring segment. When checking the reach of the woodcutting station, I noticed that we could extend the forest behind the clothing industry. But that would make it a bit too circular for my taste, so I left it as is for now. At this point, our biggest expenditure was food for our citizens, and that meant we should start thinking about doing some farming. Unfortunately, none of the nearby areas were really suitable for this purpose. The best option would be the plateau to the north, near the bauxite deposits. But the path leading up to it just isn't suited for trains. We might need to think of something else. This would be perfect, but it's pretty far away, so big-scale food production might have to wait until the second city is operational. At most, I can see us doing a couple medium fields for Estergrad, but that's about it. Well, that's that done. I will upgrade the other side in a bit. As for the steel production, the supply is doing a bit better these days, but we are still struggling for workers. Thankfully, we have the space and services for them at this point, so it's all just a matter of time. Next, the traffic around the bus station was getting a bit too busy, so it was time for an end station depot for the buses. I would have preferred to have it closer to the edge of town, but it needed power for the fuel pumps to keep the buses filled, so it ended up near the T-shaped house. The footpath going to the small clinic will have to be cut off for a little bit, it's in the way of the driveway. Said driveway will also have to be long enough to allow a node for the footpath to reconnect, so it needed to be a bit further back. Just like that. Let's increase the priority on these roads, so service in the clinic can resume as soon as possible.
All right, it's about time we started upgrading the other side of the main highway. And we are out of coal again. It's a balancing act at this point, which I can never really manage to get just right. To help out, I decided to restrict where people can work when they arrive in Karbanov. That bus stop can reach the lumber processing, which I would like to put a stop to. Those can get their workforce from the clothing factory stop. And we have a serious epidemic on our hands. Thankfully, our healthcare system is robust enough to deal with anything the game can throw at us right now, so no need to worry. I would have preferred to have the footpaths finished for just such an occasion, but it should be fine, for serious cases, the ambulances can reach everyone from the main hospital. The materials are still not all delivered to the two new apartments, so let's wait a bit more. But the twin bridges leading out of the town are done. That's something at least. Now, we had a lot of dumpers ready to go on one side of the highway, so how about we send the paver home, and hope it chooses to go to the correct one. Unfortunately, all the open hole trucks are busy, so it will have to wait a little. Finally, the steel is coming to the apartments. Ever since we stopped importing steel altogether, our expenses went down quite a bit, but we are still spending a lot of money on food. The next episode might have to deal with that. But as I have said before, I think it will be a small operation, enough to satisfy the citizens of Estergrad, and that's it. But at least the paver chose to go to the road with those dumpers, so it managed to decrease the backlog a little. Things are looking up around the new end station. The footpaths are about to be completed, and the driveway is also coming along nicely. With the building materials delivered, time to finish these apartment blocks. As for the walkability, it seems these two will be fine like this. They can access everything, culture, shopping, sports, education, childcare, everything. I think it's safe for us to open them up. One more to go.
I kept checking the loans, and the available amount always kept hovering around 500,000, which was a good sign. If we kept importing things like prefab panels and bricks for all these projects, and we could break even, then if we stopped expanding for a bit, then we would be making money instead. I think I can talk about the time skip now. Basically, after the episode was over, I let the game run until the year was over. So, episode 20 will pick up at the very start of 1969. Nice. There were only two changes I made during that time. I will stop exporting wood, which I will start doing in a second by the way, and I also invested in two more dumpers to import more iron for the steel mill. But that's all the changes I did. As soon as I stopped recording, all constructions were halted, and I just kept playing with the loan amounts, so I can keep the interest rate as low as possible. And that's about it. Anyways, the driveway for the end station is about to be completed, after which construction on the main building can begin. At this point, I just let people back into the last apartment construction. We only had a bit of steel left to arrive, so I just let them use up the currently available stuff, and then leave the rest for the buses to deal with. Okay, back to zero. The current workers will use the remaining steel and then it can finish whenever it wants after that. Another thing biting into our profits is the lack of workers in the clothing factories. I didn't check the stock in the town warehouse, so I can only hope we have enough there. Once again, we are waiting for steel. But I am adamant about not importing it anymore. If we kept buying it whenever we are low on the domestic supply, we would go bankrupt in an instant. Maybe prioritizing the gravel processing was a mistake. Let's try a bit more equal distribution of workers next. and one half of this road is done. Shouldn't take long for the rest now. The roller is already driving backwards on this one. The workers alone managed to finish most of the smoothing by themselves. Okay, one long stretch of road left for today. Also ended up only doing the second round of smoothing here. We'll be done in no time. And finished. Let's dot our I's and cross our T's by upgrading the intersection.
and got back to the end station just in time to see it finished. First, we should tell the fuel distributors to fill it up with gas, so buses can run a bit more reliably, without having to make detours for refueling. And time for another loan. I was getting more and more convinced that a small time skip was necessary to keep us afloat. Once the first fuel gets delivered, I will start adding the end station to the different commuter lines. Alright. I think it will be perfectly fine if we just add it at the end of the list of stops for each line. Their second stops are always the drop-off stations, so they will finish the route, come back to the end station, and leave on their next trip after waiting and refueling a bit. I didn't do it for the Kirkimov bus stop though. That one had eight microbuses running, and that might have been a bit much for that end station to handle. and all the apartments are finished. About time. Now we just need to fill them up with citizens, which will take a while. Now that the end station is operational, we can monitor the buses a bit better. If we have two or more of them waiting from the same line, maybe we can sell off some of those buses. If it's only one, then the line should be just fine. Also, as you've seen, I tried to change the intersection to give priority to the buses using it. But that's just didn't feel right. The main street needs to be the primary. Good thing I decided to use different bus models for different lines. Made it a bit easier to decide if we can sell some of them or not. Not gonna lie, this is the first time I use these end stations, so I might be using it all wrong. I'm sure Bibaljo or Kayumaya will have some videos I can watch on the subject. Anyways, time to put this intersection back to normal. Watching vehicles wait on the main road for the buses to leave just didn't feel right. And I'm fairly sure a traffic light would be overkill. The number of workers in the steel mill is looking real healthy at this point, and it's all down to the coal supply. Let's try a completely default distribution of workers next. As I've said before, I will give exporting lumber a try. But just as always, it will be a futile gesture at best. When I first built this industry, I did mention that selling boards is about as useless as selling gravel, but the steel exporting trucks seem so bored, so I thought I would give them something to do. Well, as long as they make more money doing this than they are using by burning fuel, it's not a complete waste. The next relatively big project will the upgrading of this long stretch of road going up this mountain. As for the trains, I'm not sure I will make it climb such a steep incline. We might have to go around, 
and go along the river to reach the mainland with the trains. But we won't be deciding this today. But we will definitely need to do some terrain manipulation regardless, so I decided to add one of the free construction offices at the top of the mountain. Should give us enough reach to deal with some of the nastier slopes. At this point, I was convinced that the main reason we are not making enough coal is right at the source. Maybe the mine should get the priority. To close things out, I wanted to add some trees and bushes round the end station. Even though my alarm clock was beeping at me quite loudly, I felt it would be a better closer than just finishing with the worker distribution. So, as I've said before, we end this episode in July of 1968, and pick things up right at the start of 1969. It bears repeating, that nothing major was done during those months. I stopped exporting timber, so the trucks can focus on selling steel instead and I also bought two more dumpers for the iron imports. As the population started to increase, the coal supply managed to fix itself. Unfortunately, we had two pretty big storages to refill, one in Kirkimov, and another in the rail CO, so it took a while until we were able to export steel. But we got there, and by December, we were selling it pretty reliably. As for the loans, over time I managed to consolidate all those different installments into seven separate ones, all of them holding 500,000 rubles. This lowered our monthly interest from around 68k to just about 58k. That's 10,000 more rubles we can keep each month. As for the important stuff, the actual cash reserves ended up at around 300,000, and the available loans were over 800,000 by the end. But that one might be because of the increase in population, still better than the usual 500k. If we take all this into account, the overall increase in available money was about 400 grand. Not bad for half a year especially if we consider all the loan repayments we need to do every month. If we are careful, we might be able to repay one of those seven loans in a bit. Anyways, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, then leaving a like and subscribing to the channel just might motivate me to make more. If you are more in the donating mood, you can find a link to my Kofi page in the description, where you can buy me a glass of water. I don't really drink coffee. Thank you for your support, and until next time, I will see you later.